The Cold War began between the United States and the free world and the former Soviet Union shortly after the close of World War II. About 25 years ago, we hoped that the Cold War was over. I think we should know today that it has begun again. In 2008, Putin and the Russians invaded Georgia. I was there within a week or so of those kinetic operations. And we hoped that that would be an isolated incident, but it's not. Late last week, the Russians invaded the, invaded the Crimea. And it looks like they've got designs on other parts of the Ukraine. We should know how serious this is, and if the free world doesn't step up to defend the Ukraine and do so economically and politically, and hopefully not necessarily militarily, we're going to see Putin then take over piece after piece, I should say square after square, on the geopolitical chessboard that he sees as post-Cold War and now the extension of the Cold War. I think this United States government needs to take some bold steps, and the first thing would be to backfill the loan that Putin promised the Ukrainians, all $15 billion, and have that come incrementally so that we can ensure that the Ukrainians get their security essentially in proportion to U.S. dollars that would come in. Uh, we need to go to the polls, and I talked to their former Minister of Defense just yesterday. They will accept the missiles being set back up in Poland. We need to see if we can set the, set the radar back up in, in Czechoslovakia and have a missile defense shield that can defend Europe from Iran but also from a Soviet threat. We need to bring our military in to do training operations on the ground in Eastern Bloc countries so that Putin knows that there's a military force that's forming and we need to retool ourselves in preparation for this re-beginning of the Cold War. We need to cancel the cuts to our military that were announced by Secretary Hagel just the other day, and we need to rebuild our military on a strong basis and foundation. Most of all, we need a President of the United States who is strong and solid and resolute, who when he speaks is willing to back it up. And we haven't seen that, and I think that void has been what has brought about some of these moves on the part of Putin and the Russians. And so these are important moves that we need to take now, along with economic sanctions of multiple kinds and accelerate the development of our energy here in this country and ship liquefied natural gas back over to Europe to help them because they're afraid that Putin will shut off the gas and the oil that comes from Russia and supplies about a third of the energy in Western Europe. And we should remember that this, this configuration that is the result of Putin's move into the Crimea is just one stop. And he has eyes on the Russian-speaking component of the Ukraine. Uh, there's a high likelihood, in my opinion, that he will try to move in there under some kind of a pretense. Uh, you know, say, well, What's the pretense? The pretense that Putin used to go into the Crimea was the pretense of going in to defend and apparently with military, un, military that's unmarked with no insignias on their uniforms, um, in violation of international law, but to go in and defend the, the Russian-speaking people that live in the Crimea. Well, there are plenty of Russian-speaking people that live in the eastern third of the Ukraine as well, and the same pretense would open the door for a move like that. This operation in the Crimea reminds me of, of the Sudetenland and Adolf Hitler. Hitler pressed to represent the German-speaking people that were living in Czechoslovakia at the time. And as he pressed, he pushed the international world to the point where Neville Chamberlain, the former Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, went to Munich to meet with Hitler and to negotiate with the Sudetenland. And Neville Chamberlain decided we're going to give the, give the Germans the Sudetenland because after all the German speaking people and maybe Hitler will be satisfied we're going to trade land for peace. He flew back to London and walked off the plane, waved a letter that said this letter that Hitler signed that said he doesn't have any further territorial claims on Europe uh, it guarantees peace in our time, peace in our time. Well that was 1938 and short months after that the Nazis invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia. It seems to be forgotten by a lot of history buffs. They invaded Czechoslovakia in 1938 and a little later, and then on September 1st of 1939, they invaded Poland, and the Russians carved up the other half of Poland. They came in 12 days later. This was then the kinetic launching of World War II, and we know how that ended. It ended in a global warfare, a global conflagration. Tens of millions of people were killed. The borders of country after country were rearranged around the world. And at great expense in blood and treasure, 
the, the, the tyrants that had come to power in Germany and the imperial, the imperial Japanese were defeated. But out of that came the more powerful Soviet Union that survived. And now we see the territorial gains that have come on the, at the hand of Putin and begin again this geopolitical chessboard. We have to understand, Mr. President, it is a giant Cold War chess game that's going on. Putin's playing it. We are not. We need to make some moves on this chessboard, and maybe we can elect a leader again in 2016 like Ronald Reagan that will get, to, get us to the point where we can checkmate the Russians again.